Hello, welcome to this course, Learn Python, a complete course for beginners from Ignani. Python is available on a wide variety of platforms, including Windows, Linux, Mac, OX, etc. In this video, I will show you how to install Python on Windows and even set up our Python environment. You can find the most up-to-date and current source code, binaries, documentation, news, etc. on the official website of Python, which is www.python.org uh, This Python distribution is available for a wide variety of platforms. Whether it is Linux, Windows, Mac or any other OS, there is a Python distribution available. You can just download the binary code applicable for your platform and you can just go ahead and install. And installing it is very easy, which you will see later on. If the binary code for your platform is not available, so in that case, you will have to download the source code and then manually compile it using a C compiler. However, if you are compiling, you will have more flexibility in terms of choice of the features that you require uh, in, inst in your installation. You can go ahead and select whatever you require. In this video, I am going to show you how to download and install Python on Windows. And we will also go ahead and set up the environment manually. To download the installer, you can go to the site python.org and here in the download section, you can find the list of downloads. By default, since I am browsing from the Windows machine, I get a Windows uh, link for the latest version over here. If you are looking for something else other than Windows, like Linux or Unix or Mac OX or something else, you can select one of these links. You will also have Docker images. And if you, this is the latest version, but if you are looking for a specific release other than the latest version, you can scroll down over here and this list and this list over here provides some of the recently released. I would like to mention that okay, like Python comes in two flavors, one version which is 3.x onwards, and the other version is 2.x. There is quite a lot of difference between either of these things and uh, the code and the syntax and quite a lot of other things have changed. But for our case, we are going to go and download the latest version and we are going to use that. Not just this, you can also find documentation from this link. Here you can find the documentation separately for Python 3x as well as 2x. Now let us go back and see how to install it. Click on this particular link. As soon as you click, the downloading starts. And now we have the installer already downloaded. Just go ahead and double click on this, which opens up setup window. There are two options primarily that you can see. The one is install now, which is a default installer. The other one is a customized installation where you can go ahead and choose the location and features that you would want to install. Other than this, there is an option here, which you can see install launcher for all users. So here, when you select this option, the installed Python will be available for all the users on this machine. If you don't select this option, it will be available only to the currently logged in user, whoever it is. And then the second one is add Python 3.8 to path. So this is a part of environment setup, which I'm going to show you how to do it manually so that you'll have a clear understanding instead of going and selecting from here. So now go ahead and click on the custom installation. Once you select, you get a list of optional features that you can go ahead and select. The first one is documentation, which I don't want because I would always prefer to go online and look for the documentation. And then the rest of them, I'm going to just leave them as it is. Click on next. Here you have an advanced options wherein you can go ahead and define where it has to be installed. It says installed for all users. Yes, I would want that. This is the path where it will be installed. That is C program files and Python 3.8. I don't want to add the Python to an environment variables. I'll be doing that manually. Now just go ahead and click on install and then the installation starts. It's going to take some time to install. I'm going to fast forward the setup progress. So you need not wait for the installation to complete. The setup is complete. Let's go ahead and close the installer. Now if you go ahead and start the command prompt and if you type Python over here, the Microsoft Store window came up. The reason is it says Python is still not 
installed but we know we just installed python right so if you would want to run python the other option would be like going to the path where we installed python so that is program files python 3.8 then if i type python it comes up we just installed version 3.8.0 in the date and time when we installed it so this is the python prompt that i am in the reason why it didn't work in the earlier instance and we once we went to this particular folder is we we had not configured the environment variable called path now in some cases if we try to run you may also get this particular error which says that python is not recognized as an internal or external command operable program or batch file the reason why we are getting this error and why it didn't work earlier is programs and other executable files are usually placed in their own directory like in our case we placed our python installation in the folder python 3.8 each installer would be placed in its respective directory hence they are all scattered in many directories over many drives whenever i try to access a exe it fails because the system won't know where it has to go and search for it in order to make them available to the operating system from any path operating system provides a search path that lists the directories that the os searches for executables this path is stored in an environment variable which is a named string maintained by the operating system this variable contains information available to the command shell and other programs the path variable is where we need to provide this path so that the command shell knows whenever i type python where it should look for so let's set the path in windows 10 to set the path so what you can do here you click you can right click on start click on system and here you can type and then select the option edit environment system environment variables and this is a small dialog that appears and here go to the advanced tab and then click on environment variables button as soon as you click on this you get another dialog for environment variables here there are two sections one is user variables for the currently logged in user and then the system variables this variable it's only available for the currently logged on user if you want it available for all the users you can use this option so this is where i am going to set so here you can look for a variable called path if it is not available you can click on new and then enter path over here and then enter the value but since in my case it's already there i am going to select that and click on edit it opens up the path so here we can click on new paste the path in our case it is this one i'm going to copy this and come back here click on new and then paste now click on okay and then again okay to save it now once this is done let me restart the command shell now if i type python here it comes up i'm directly logged into the python prompt all that i did just now is i went ahead and added the path for this python installation folder to the path environment variable and that list will tell this os or the command shell where it has to look for the executables and it picks it from there and starts python prompt other than this there are a few more environment variables we'll go through them but i won't be configuring them over here for this video tutorial i feel the path variable is sufficient to continue we just now configured the path variable now let us see the other environment variables that are available which we need to configure the first one is python path python path has a similar role to the path variable that we just now set this variable tells python interpreter where to locate the module files imported into a program you will get to know what exactly is a module later on this path should include the python source library directory and the directories containing the python source code python path is sometimes preset by the python installer if you remember the installer had an option to set the python environment variables so 
by checking that python path is also set the next one is python startup this variable is used in windows to instruct python to find the first case insensitive match in a import statement set this variable to any value to activate this the next one is python home it is an alternative module search path it is usually embedded in the python startup or python path directories to make switching modules libraries easy the last one is python case okay it contains the path of an initialization file containing the python source code why do we require this it is executed every time you start the interpreter in unix it is named as .pythonrc.py and it contains commands that load utilities or modify the python path variable itself now let us run our first python program now that we have done installing python let me show you how to go about in the previous video you saw how simple it was to go ahead and create a small program and even run it i am going to continue with the same i am going to say print simple python command that i'm issuing and then once i press enter it executed i would like to inform you that python provides us two ways to run a program the first one is using an interactive prompt also known as python prompt which you are seeing over here and the other one is using a script file let us discuss each one of them in detail let us start with the python interactive interpreter prompt simply called as python prompt the interactive interpreter prompt which you are seeing here is a command line shell which gives us immediate feedback for any statement that we execute and also it will run the previously executed statements in active memory say we just executed one statement if i go ahead and execute another statement it executes this statement in the memory and the latest one it then executes that and then gives us the information and here you saw that as soon as i executed this i got this hello python world interactive mode is a good way to play around and try various syntax and commands for which you would want to see the results immediately let me try a few more programs so here if you see these three right arrows this is the python's way of telling you that you are in an interactive mode and it is ready to accept commands so if i type 1 plus 2 it immediately responds back with the result if i i can go ahead and say 3 into 6 and it gives the result interactive mode allows you to test out and see what python will do if you ever feel the need to play with the python statement i would suggest you to get into the interactive mode and try them out let's try a few more here i'm going to show a string into number of times so this will print this particular string three times you'll get to know about all these syntaxes later on so right now just don't worry about this however if you are running multiple statements at a time i would suggest that you follow the script option because sometimes interactive python prompt will be confusing i said that previous statements will also be executed in memory so i can show you an example i'll say x is equal to 5 so this 5 is assigned to this variable now if i say print x it returns 5 this was a previous command but when i executed this python executed this previous command as well and then came back and executed this so initially it executed this command where 5 was in assigned to x and then now it came back and printed that this is one way of running python commands now let us see another option which is using a script file when i say a script file we don't require python prompt for that let me use another window here you see i'm directly in a command shell let me go ahead and open a small file that i have created in this file you can see i have four commands the first one is hello python world and then there is another command which is print 1 plus 5 then as i am assigning let me assign 10 to this variable x and then i'm printing x into x so this is my small python code that i have written with multiple statements 
I'm going to just save this and then I'm going to come back to the command prompt. So how to execute a script file? Before executing a script file, I would like to tell you that why we need us to use this script file. Interpreter prompt is always good way to run the individual statements of code. One by one, we can write the code and then execute it. However, it's not always a correct way to write code every time on the terminal because sometimes I may have to enter more than one command, then go ahead and modify it, then again try it. It's not a proper way to do it. So in such scenarios, it's always better that we write our code into a file and then execute that file whenever we want it, which you saw just now. I created a file with a list of statements. Now I'm going to execute this file. I'm going to tell Python that to execute this particular file and then Python runs all the statements in order and it gives me the result. How to execute that? First start your statement with the command Python and then give the file name with the path, complete path. If it is in the same folder, we can ignore that. So I have my file in the same folder. I'm going to just give the file name first dot py which is the file name and when I enter you can see I get back hello python world which was the first statement and then 6 I wanted to print 1 plus 5 we get back the result as 6 and then I am assigning 10 into this variable and then I am printing this x into x now you saw how it's easy to write all the commands once and execute it if it was in an interactive tutorial, I had to execute again, type the commands and then execute them again and again. In this case, all I need to do is since I have written it once, I can again call this command and then execute this file. All the four commands gets executed. This is the most common way of executing scripts. That's about this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to install PyCharm. PyCharm is an IDE for developing Python. You will see why we require that IDE and what are its benefits once we install and start to use it. For now, that's it. Please do subscribe to our channel if you have not done so. And then do like this video and other videos and do share with your friends. Thank you for now. See you in the next video.